Do you know, it must be infuriating if you are part of the team that are working for Harry and Meghan. We told you recently about how certain few now are breaking free from that, well, shall we say, enclave, all about the private investigation with the bullying claims back and forth, that sort of stuff. It's very difficult when you work for celebrities, and that is what Harry and Meghan are now, just micro-celebrities that people actually work for. They can sign all the NDAs that they want, but of course, eventually, the stories leak through. Now, what I find fascinating about these particular stories that come through are literally from people that have worked with them and continue to work with them because, of course, when you are a celebrity, it doesn't matter how much you tie them down, somebody's always offering you, from a tabloid, more money to reveal secrets. You only have to look at somebody like Britney Spears. You know, her story gets put out there, even though she's probably not speaking to anybody. But if you look closely around the people around her, they're the ones still leaking the stories. One story, though, that I find well, shall we say perplexing to say the least, is this from Megan on her recent trip to Nigeria. And you would have thought she may have learned her lesson. Clearly not. As ever, let me explain. Morning, lovely to see you today. And as ever, thank you for joining me. You're all right. Not bad, thank you. Aren't these daisies lovely? Just lovely. Nature's beauty, isn't it? No, not me. Well, yeah, well, there's no need to be rude, obviously. You know. <laughs> yes, I can see what you're wearing. Don't you knock at me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we could see each other now? Yeah, well, I know, yes, this is the thing, isn't it? No good putting your eye mask on now, we're going to sleep, I've seen. Yes, I can see through this lens, frightening if I could, eh? Back as ever, though, to your royal story of the day. Remember when Meghan and Harry turned up at that Disney premiere and there was all that sort of stuff? And forget about Harry begging for work, voiceover work for his wife at that premiere, which he knew was being recorded. He wanted to get it out there. You know, whatever people say, oh, he didn't realise, he knew. He's been in that job long enough to know that every sentence eventually will be lip read and deciphered and all that sort of stuff they know. But what was interesting was later on, Megan came out with this gem of a story which was then refuted by the actor. And apparently it was when they first went to Africa how people were so delighted that Megan and Harry had gone. It was almost like the arrival of Nelson Mandela. That gave a lot of people a lot of chuckles. And of course then, as I say, the said actor literally came out and said, never happened, don't know where she got that from. We never had that conversation as ever was slicing allegedly. But this is just the fantasy world that Meghan and Harry live in. So fast forward a couple of years now, and a bit like the endless washing up story that Meghan will always share, uh, you know, if you just asked her to cough, she'll come up with that story. Oh, really, you want me to tell you? Like she did recently with Katie Couric. Well, apparently she wanted to regale the Nigerians with that story again about the second coming of Nelson Mandela. Her team very wisely tried to crush it down, but they didn't know until the 11th hour whether they could or not, because Megan said, this is relatable and people will remember it. What people remember is it wasn't true. The actor said it, no, it wasn't true. Nobody remembers ever saying this particular line, but somehow it's logged in Megan's head that this actually happened. Finally, yes, they held bated breath while she was doing that hosting alongside the seminar thing that she did on the stage. You know, the one where she loves to clutch a microphone and pretend that she's just you and I while sat in a designer dress, dripping in jewels, you get the picture. Well, they were thankful that she didn't bring it up. But according to Megan, she didn't want to seem ostentatious and boastful, hence the reason she held back from saying it. And apparently when she said this, Harry was nodding in agreement. Really, you couldn't make this stuff up, could you? How frightening is it, must it be, should I say, living in the world of Harry and Meghan when you're paid to be their publicity? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.